As an IDE for full-stack Python development, PyCharm Professional has great support for working with Python code. Thanks to the bundled WebStorm, same is true for JavaScript. In this video, we show running, debugging, and testing your JavaScript code. While the examples are running in WebStorm, it's the same for PyCharm. With PyCharm Professional, you can run entire apps and specific scripts right where you create your JavaScript code. Regardless of what you want to run, the principles are all the same. Let's see what they are. I want to run this JavaScript file using Node.js. To do this, I can right click in the editor, or the tab, or the file, and select Run, or I can use a dedicated shortcut for it. When you run a file this way, WebStorm does two things. First, it runs that file and, depending on the file type, either opens it in the browser or shows the run tool window with the results of running the code, like it did here for me. Second, WebStorm creates a temporary run debug configuration so we could run a file like that. The newly created run debug configuration can be found at the top of this drop down menu. Run debug configurations can be either temporary or permanent. To turn a temporary configuration into a permanent one, open this drop down menu with configurations and save the configuration. You may be wondering what's the difference between a temporary and a permanent run debug configuration? That's simple. Temporary run debug configurations are deleted when the default limit of five configurations is reached. Now, if you want to adjust the settings of a newly created configuration or use another one, you can do so in the Run Debug Configurations dialog, which opens up if you click Edit Configurations. This is a place for managing Run Debug Configurations. To add a new one, hit plus, select the desired configuration type, and specify the settings based on your project or configuration type. To fine tune an existing configuration, click its name and update what's needed. These are the basics you need to know about running code and using run debug configurations in WebStorm. If you're ready to dive a bit deeper, you can find more information in our documentation. There are also some tips and tricks available in the WebStorm guide at www.jetbrains.com slash webstorm slash guide slash topics slash running dash debugging. We just saw how easy it is to run JavaScript code, but sometimes front-end code has bugs and you need to debug it. For JavaScript code, our IDEs bundle WebStorm's debugger. Let's take a look at its key features. Let's open an HTML page using the IDE. As before, we use a context menu, but choose Debug. In HTML files, this creates and selects a JavaScript run debug configuration, which is a JavaScript debug configuration type. It points to a URL and our projects index.html page. The configuration uses Chrome as the browser. JavaScript files can be debugged under the Node.js debugger instead of Chrome in a similar way. Right click in a JavaScript file instead of an HTML file and choose Debug to start debugging. This creates a new run debug configuration. If we edit the new configuration, we see it is of type Node.js. Debugging in both Chrome and Node.js have similar features. We'll use Chrome first then finish with Node.js. We commonly log to the console when debugging. This JavaScript file is included in our HTML and has a console.log line. When debugging, the IDE reroutes these log statements from the Chrome console to its console. Breakpoints let you say, stop execution on this line. In the IDE, adding a breakpoint is easy. Just click in the gutter beside the line and a red circle will appear. Now when I click, execution stops on that line and shows information about variables. No debug restart nor browser reload needed. Clicking the resume button continues execution past the breakpoint. 
If our debugger window is hidden, the IDE stops on the breakpoint when it is triggered, then opens the debugger window. When we stop at a breakpoint, we can inspect the state of the program at that point, the variables and values in the local scope, and other scopes. You don't have to look in the debugger tool window. Values are overlaid inline as well. If you close a file, and then later reopen it, the breakpoint is still there, even if you close the IDE completely. This also means it's easy to lose track of breakpoints in big projects. With the View Breakpoints dialog, the IDE makes it simple to see all of them and delete breakpoints you aren't using. Perhaps you simply want the debugger to spring up when you hit a problem rather than manually set breakpoints. View Breakpoints lets you set a breakpoint to handle JavaScript exceptions in your code. Let's say we then make a change that has an error. During debugging, when execution hits the exception, the IDE stops on the line with the problem, no manual breakpoint needed. It might be cumbersome to always stop at a breakpoint, repeatedly clicking resume until some condition is met. Instead, we can add a breakpoint, then right click to add a condition for when the breakpoint is applied. The next time we execute, the line is passed over until the condition is met. The IDE's debugger has many ways to walk through your code. First, resume continues execution until the breakpoint is reached again. The loop variable is now increased. Next, step over goes to the line after the breakpoint, even if the breakpoint line calls a function. If you are stopped on a line that calls a function and you want to debug into that function, you can use step into and step through that function's code. When you are done in that function, step out to get back to where you were. Our breakpoint is on a line though with two function calls. How do we tell the debugger which to step into? Use the IDE's smart step into and choose the function. We are now in a function called from a function, called from a function. We can use the frames panel to see the path we took. Each frame lets us see the variables at that point. Stepping over code can be laborious. Instead, move your cursor to your target, then click the run to cursor button to step all the way to that line. Stopping at a breakpoint lets you use the variables pane to inspect the scope. What if you'd like more power? You can also, when stopped at a breakpoint, use the console. This prompt is in the context of the breakpoint and its local variables. Or use evaluate expression, our graphical pop-up for interactively executing JS, which is also in the context at that breakpoint. It lets us execute expressions but also visually explore your data. Often you're interested in one particular variable or expression as you step through code. You can set up watches, which focus on the variable or expression. Let's create a watch using an expression about the variable. Now as we resume through the code, we can easily see the expression results at different points in execution. As you leave that scope, the watch will refer to a missing variable. Removing watches is easy. Select the watch and click minus. Like breakpoints, watches are saved in your project and will be there after reopening the file or the IDE itself. Finally, we mentioned at the beginning that these debugger features work in Node's debugger as well as Chrome. Let's change to debugging in Node by first closing the JavaScript debug session. Set a breakpoint, right click in a JavaScript file, and debug to see the Node.js debugger in action. Same features, we stop at the breakpoint, we can see variable values, use the console, and step through our code in all the same ways shown earlier. In this screencast, we showed the productivity of debugging JavaScript in WebStorm, both with the browser engine and with Node.js. To learn about debugging, 
visit our documentation on this topic, including information on specific frameworks such as Angular. Also, you can find some debugging tips and tricks in the WebStorm guide at jetbrains.com slash webstorm slash guide. Testing is an important part of front-end development, and PyCharm Professional makes this fun and productive by bringing test writing and running into the IDE. Let's see how to get started with testing in PyCharm Professional. This project has one file of code and one file for tests. Earlier in the running section and debugging section, we showed executing a file with a context menu. Let's do the same and run this test code under this project's test runner, Jest. As with running and debugging, we get a custom tool window for the output, showing one test passed and one test failed with information about the expected versus received. As before, the IDE created a temporary run configuration. Since this project uses Jest, it's a Jest configuration type. Other test runners, such as Karma and Mocha, are supported. The test tool window has lots of useful features. For example, you can rerun all or only failed tests and import or export test results. It's easy to jump to a test even if the tab isn't open. You don't have to have the test tool window open to see test information. Failures are reported inline, both in the gutter and by hovering, which gives a pop-up explaining why the test failed. From this pop-up, we can run this failed test under the debugger to see what's wrong. A breakpoint will be added to stop execution on that line. You can look at the values in scope and all the other debugging features, then fix the problem. Now that we fixed the test, let's rerun it, but slightly different this time. See the icon on the left of the test in the editor? This icon not only shows you the test status for the tests you've run recently, but also lets you quickly run that one test in various ways. This time, our tests have successfully passed. Let's take a look at another handy tool which is available for some testing technologies. If I click on the shield icon, for example, in the toolbar, I can quickly build a code coverage report for this test. The coverage tool watches which lines of my code get executed by all the tests, then flags lines which weren't executed. This report shows how many files were covered with tests, including the percentage of lines that were covered in those files. This information is also shown in the project tool window, as well as color coding in the gutter of the file that indicates coverage. That's it for the key concepts about testing in WebStorm. For more information about testing apps with Jest and other technologies, check out our documentation page on this topic. We also have some testing tips and tricks in the WebStorm guide at jetbrains.com slash webstorm slash guide slash topic slash testing.